button below. Israel is conducting a fierce battle against Iran's proxies. There are fierce confrontations on three fronts, the Gaza Strip, Southern Lebanon, and the Syria-Iraq front. The IDF, supported by the US and the West, is standing firm against Tehran-sponsored militias. However, the Gaza Strip is the epicenter of the conflict. Iran has supplied Hamas with munitions and military training from Gaza in order for it to carry out its wicked intentions against Israel. The known weaponry smuggling route from Iran to Hamas in Gaza by boat begins in Iran, travels to Yemen, and then to Sudan. Trucks continue their 1,000-kilometer journey through the desert to Egypt from Sudan. Smugglers then transit the Suez Canal and move firearms through tunnels dug beneath the Gaza Strip with the assistance of Bedouins. Smugglers routinely carry weapons for Hamas from Sudan, as is widely documented. Other weapons provided by Iran are smuggled through the Suez Canal and then given discreetly to Gaza's frogmen to halt the supply of weaponry from Iran to Gaza. The Israeli army has intensified its planned regional operations in Gaza to combat Hamas. To achieve that goal, Israeli ground, air, and naval forces blockaded Gaza and took complete control of the city's northern sector. After fully securing all intelligence and operational components, the IDF sought to split the city's north and south and cut Hamas's network in the sea and tunnels. Let's take a deeper look at the present situation of the battles and the realities of combat today. As part of this plan, 360,000 Israeli soldiers, over 300 tanks and armored vehicles, Shin, Bet, and Mossad Special Intelligence Forces, and the EDF's Golani Battalions are all on high alert. In these engagements, the Golani Battalions, Vanguard, and Reconnaissance Units play a critical role. Military groups commanded by the Golani Brigade's Reconnaissance Unit reached the Gaza Strip's coastal areas and engaged in two separate ends engagements. These units are critical for operations in the direction of Beit Hanun, Beit Lahia, Jabalia, and Zaytun towns. Despite Tehran's help, the pro-Iranian Hamas group has been confined to the siege thanks to these I.I. forces in the city's northeastern outskirts. In addition to the members of the Golani Battalion, the Israeli Army's 36th Division is battling against Iran's aims in Gaza. The Israel Defense Forces released details about the 36th Division's operations in the Gaza Strip during which the division's men moved across the area and reached the beach. The 36th Division, comprised of troops, tanks, artillery, and combat engineers, attacked around 1,600 Hamas objectives, including infrastructure, weapons, stores, anti-tank missile positions, and militia observation points. During the fighting, the IDF stated it killed around 300 Hamas fighters. In other words, as Iran's support grew, Israel's military forces conducted far more successful and visible offensive actions. Today, the IDF confirmed Iran's worst fears. Israel Defense Forces spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari declared that Israel's offensive operation in Gaza has now completely ringed Gaza City and divided the coastal area in two. The Yifis also said to have taken complete control of the city's northern outskirts, the IDF army has demolished the majority of Hamas tunnel exits in the city's northern outskirts, while Golani, the Israeli army's most elite and largest brigade, has been conducting vanguard operations against extant tunnel exits and tunnels. Furthermore, the city's naval siege leaves Hamas militants utterly isolated. These comments and pronouncements are of such a character that they effectively negate the military and logistical support that Iran is attempting to provide to Hamas. And what was Iran's next step in such a situation when Israel was in command of the war? First and foremost, Tehran has re-emphasized Hezbollah as the guarantor of the establishment and escalation of turmoil in northern Israel. You may recall Hezbollah leader Nasrallah's recent word. It was unsurprising that these comments carried a lot of vitriol against Israel's cooperation with the US. The entire world was expecting a similar approach, but this time, the Iranian leadership made political statements that crossed the line. Iran renewed its threats against the United States, threatening repercussions if Washington fails to execute the Gaza ceasefire. Mohammad Reza Ashtiani, Iran's defense minister, has urged for an immediate halt to the conflict in Gaza and a truce. The warning came at a critical juncture in the ongoing conflict in Gaza, which began on October 7th, when Iran-backed Hamas invaded Israel murdering over 1,400 people, largely civilians, and kidnapping over 240 more. 
Israeli forces had already initiated ground offensives, and Gaza was effectively cut off from both the coast and the center. Iran, on the other hand, was increasingly helping Hamas while maintaining inflammatory anti-Israel rhetoric. But, in addition to the United States of America, the United States promptly defended Israel's right to self-defense and offered military assistance, including the deployment of warships and 2,000 marines. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has likewise dismissed Iranian rhetoric, stating that the war will not end until Hamas is utterly annihilated. Additionally, Prime Minister Netanyahu declared that there would be no truce until Hamas released all 229 of its prisoners. One of the primary factors in the EDF's conclusion was the Israeli Prime Minister's stance on the captives. Iran, on the other hand, has been regularly feeding its proxy troops in order to prolong this process and maintain absolute turmoil in the Middle East. An Iranian-backed Third Intifada would drive Israel into the sea, dispersing idea forces in the region through proxy militias, according to Tehran's devious designs. And according to this strategy, Tehran would push us military power out of the region, giving Iran the time it needs to impose its dominance over the region with the help of China and Russia. Despite the efforts of neither Russia nor China in the Gaza Strip, where the seeds of this danger are now being sown, Iran's network in the Middle East could not be established, and Israel is being drawn into a process in which Iran is actually directing attacks in a proxy war, not against Hamas. Aside from Russia's dominance in the Black Sea, China is now attempting to focus on the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. The U.S. Eisenhower Aircraft Carrier Strike Group, entering the Red Sea through Egypt's Suez Canal derails China and Russia's intentions. These preparations have not stopped Israel. What surprises may we expect from Hezbollah in the coming days? Hezbollah attacks have decreased since most northern Israeli settlements were evacuated. Israel shouldn't let the decrease in attacks fool them because they always have a backup plan. Iranian involvement is easy to foresee. Forecasts warn of Project Vulnerabilities returning. Iran launched Project Vulnerability in Lebanon during the popular Bayrat conference in December 2016. Project Precision aimed to improve Hezbollah rockets' lethality and precision when destroying Israeli infrastructure and economic targets. The Revolutionary Guards Corps began using worldwide black market supply lines to transport commodities and scientists from Iran to Lebanon. With Hezbollah, they created massive arsenals of deadly long-range precision-guided missiles. According to the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, the Precision Initiative with Hezbollah developed multiple missile production sites in Lebanon and Syria. Iran ordered Hezbollah to build most of Lebanon's missile production facilities to deter Israel. However, pro-Iranian forces have ignored a major obstacle. One reason is Israel's Iron Dome air defense system. The U.S. funds these systems annually. The Iron Dome stopped Hamas and Hezbollah from defeating Israel. Instead, Israeli soldiers are destroying adversaries in Gaza, southern Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon. We appreciate your monitoring. Enjoy our Israeli war documentaries, which include the latest developments and exclusive reports. We deliver trustworthy news 24-7. Watch our videos, subscribe, and click Super Thanks below. Come join our next project.